You've never seen such a big weekly growth in the SP500. Not given food. We know a lot about our areas and can help you with something. Should we take a break and see where things go? Should you buy now or should you wait? Should I sell? You could sell everything. This movie will cover everything you need to know about that subject. Stocks are going up even more after some amazing new numbers came out today. The most money ever entering the SP500 in a single week happened not long ago. The next biggest was in early 2020, just before the Roni Rona, when the SSMP was doing very well. Around this area, you saw about $11 billion join the SP that week. You have about $21 billion now, but you also got a lot of money during the Ron Rona bounce in August 2020. Ryan Dietrich, who runs the Carson Group and is on X, says that last week we saw 68% of the SP500 make a new 20-day high. This is one of the highest numbers ever and shows that there is a lot of buying pressure going back 50 years higher one year later. This has happened 18 times in the past and 10 times it has happened more often than not. Another sign that the bull is still alive and well is that the SP has been going up for seven weeks in a row. At first glance, this might seem like a bad sign, but it's actually a sign of a bull market. One year later, this has happened 25 out of 29 times in history, and you were positive 86.2% of the time. This does have a median return of around 8%, which isn't quite the 50% rally in small caps that Tom Liz Fundstrat is vouching for or predicting over the next 12 months, but 8% is 8%, and imagine what small caps are going to do if the SP does 8% next year. Small caps like SoFi, Fubo, and even Philips should do okay. Being on Snapchat not long ago, Crocs, CRISPR, and a few other smaller cap companies got some good news. Interest rate sensitive stocks are being bought and sold by even the biggest bear on Wall Street. Mike Wilson said that stocks would drop more than 40% in 2022, making the SP as low as 300. I think he said yesterday or today we've had the best breath in a month. The fact that things are getting better in 2023 is a good sign, and since a cumulative monetary policy is more likely to happen, small caps probably look good. A monetary program that works for everyone according to fund stress. The $5.88 trillion in cash sitting on the sidelines could start to be used in the next year to help the market recover, even though the triple Q has gone up over 20% since late October. You could say that some treasuries will be sold, money market funds will be withdrawn and put into stocks, and cash will be used, even though it might take a while to sell a lot of treasuries so that they can be reinvested in the markets. When you add up all of these money pools, you'll probably find more than $20 trillion, if not more just sitting there with no plans to be spent in stocks. You could double or triple your money if just 10% of the cash that seems to be sitting there doing nothing is put back into small cap stocks that are sensitive to changes in interest rates. The Russell 2000 is worth $2.23 trillion on the stock market. Even though support for young Biden hit a new low this year, Christmas spending has gone up a lot. It's possible that this will be the most expected recession in history. Anyone who has spent more than a week on Wall Street knows that the outcome that everyone wants doesn't happen very often. A high number of people are worried about the economy, so one could say that things could get better from here. A new study of AI investors shows that 19.3% of them are pessimistic, 29.4% are neutral, and 51.3% are positive, which is close to the highest level seen in the past year. The CNN fear and greed measure is at 79, which isn't too bad since the market has been going up. It is on the high end, but record amounts of money are flowing into the SP, so you'd think we'd be in a much more extreme state of greed right now. This is also a guess at what 2024 might be like there could be a rise from now until around March, and then things could speed up again in Q3 and last until the end of 2024. Earnings are due this week, even today, and FedEx is closed. Because it's so late in Q4, these companies should be able to give us pretty good advice for tomorrow. We'll also get the UK's inflation rate. Also, General Mills will pre-market Micron and BlackBerry tomorrow after business hours and Nike will report Thursday after business hours. It is thought that FedEx can tell you a lot about the business, so that one will be important. I don't think that will have a big effect on our markets unless there is a big surprise in either direction. The Consumer Sentiment Report will come out tomorrow at 10 a.m. and the most important report for you will come out on Thursday in expected 5.2% growth in Q3 GDP. To make the economy strong today, do bad things that will help it grow. A lot of small data, like the first jobless claims, will be released on Thursday. Information fed to Philly, Kansas, was the first state to accept jobless claims. I told you that Friday is a big day for the core PCE price index month-over-month -month durable goods orders, 
as well as the end of Q3 figures and a lot of soft data. Personal monthly income and expenses, I agree that it's free to look at the trade plan. You can find out what most people think by typing in trade economics calendar. When the information is made public, this is the section where both the expected and actual figures will be displayed. I concur, and I believe that this could result in a more significant increase. A Friday as of right now, the yield on the 10-year Treasury note has decreased by 2.5 basis points, reaching 3.93%. This is what is causing the market to go higher today. The gain for the Russell 2000 index is approximately 2%. As any responsible and good individual who is making a YouTube movie would say, the decision is entirely up to you. I believe that now is an excellent moment to buy, but you should not buy the SP, Triple Q, exchange traded funds, or indexes. Be sure to keep this in mind. If we take into account everything that we have discussed that is beneficial for the market, the NASDAQ, the SP, and the Dow are all up around the same amount, which is 0.5%. But what are my thoughts on stocks at this moment? During the next year, I do not believe that market-weighted names such as Apple or Microsoft will do better then. There are a few stocks that I have previously mentioned to you, such as Fubo, SoFi, DraftKings, Crocs, and PayPal. This year is going to be the year of tiny caps, and I have already mentioned their names. However, despite the fact that they are not little caps, they have been severely damaged. I would want to purchase quality names that have been knocked down, ideally small to mid-cap stocks nevertheless. You must keep in mind that quality is an essential component. Now, the reason I do not like the PY or the triple Qs over the next few days or weeks is because I believe that we will trade in a sideways direction or slightly down in the next few of weeks. That is because I believe you have purchased an excessive amount. The fact that we are trading higher at these prices is something that I believe to be fundamentally correct. It was in August of 2020 when you were last seen in this location. Prior to that, it had been a considerable amount of time since 2018 when the RSI indicated that you were overbought. This is something that occurs each and every time prices decrease or at the very least remain the same for a period of time, and I believe that it will occur once more this time as well. This is not limited to the SPY. The SPY is the index that can be described as having been purchased in excess. RSI Triple Q is currently at 79, while the IBM is currently at 70, which is quite close to 78. In spite of the fact that IWM and your small caps are the least overbought, IWM and your small caps are still extremely overbought. Do I have something that could be selling? You are correct. It is not the case whether the company is a small mid-cap or if it is impacted by interest rates. Is it possible that now is not the best moment to sell Apple or Microsoft stock, given that the stock is now at an all-time high? In 2024, it is abundantly evident to me that small mid-cap companies will outperform big tech firms, even if you do not have the financial means to purchase them. This is despite the fact that I personally believe that small mid-cap stocks are superior options. I'd be interested in working in that field. Please share your thoughts with me. Step down. Create an account on the channel, give it a like, then write a comment just below. In the event that you viewed the entire film, please let me know which stocks you are purchasing, selling, or managing. The greatest moment to add puts to your stock at the lowest possible price is right now, which is something you should be aware of if you want to reduce the amount of risk you are exposed to. Step down. Could you kindly subscribe to the site and give the video a thumbs up in the comments section below. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in the next one.